So today I have a really neat device to show you and that is this thing right here. It's a vibrating reed frequency meter. And what makes it so special is besides it being a rather unique and vintage device, it's also something that I have a neat story around. And here's the story. So about 20 years ago, I was at a computer electronics recycling place that not only recycled stuff, but it also put up for sale things like computers and monitors and so forth instead of just scrapping them. And I was there looking for some equipment and I saw this and I instantly recognized it. And the reason I recognized it is I had used something really quite similar to it when I was an undergrad in university. And I took a closer look and most incredibly, when I looked at the label at the back over here, it said, and I'll read it for you, Queen's University Energy Processing Laboratory. Well, Queen's University is the grand old university that I went to as a student. And apparently, the reason I recognized this is it was in fact the one that I had used as an undergrad. And they actually had a fantastic laboratory with larger machines and transformers and stuff like that, including some vintage equipment like this. Sadly, I guess at some point somebody decided to modernize everything and probably replace it with a electronic frequency meter and they must have decided to sell it to the scrappers and I was thrilled to have gotten it. Now, I did some research prior to making this video to see if I could find out anything about this particular meter and while there are other vibrating reed frequency meters on the internet and even some on YouTube, I haven't been able to come across anything like this particular one. And it's made by a company called Conway Electronic Enterprises. And I did some research and it's a Southern Ontario company that seems to have been most active in the 50s and 60s and 70s and maybe even the 80s. I'm not sure if it was active before then. So my guess is from that information, this thing was probably made in the 50s or 60s. Having said that, it is made beautifully with wood. So it's possible that it could have even been made prior to World War II. But since I couldn't get any more information about this particular one, who knows? But anyway, that's the history of this wonderful instrument. And what I'd like to do is show you some more details about it. Up top here is a voltage selector that allows one to pick the correct voltage tap on the coil of the electromagnet that is used to actually vibrate these reeds. And that's really how this device works. There's a big electromagnet inside. The magnetic field impinges on all these individual reeds. And if the frequency of the electricity and hence the magnetic field is the same as the resonant frequency of any one of these reeds, it essentially vibrates that reed and only that reed. And if there is energy at multiple frequencies, multiple different frequencies, more than one reed can vibrate. And that's how it's different from a conventional, more modern frequency counter style frequency meter. So let's plug it in and see what happens. There, you can clearly see it vibrating and it's showing 59.5 hertz or so. And that's probably because this is an old device and it hasn't been calibrated 
in at least 25 years because that's how long I've had it. And if we look at the frequency counter, you can see the AC mains frequency is actually almost exactly 60 hertz. So this thing is off a bit, but so what? Now, what would be more interesting is if we can attach this device to something that can spit out different frequencies. And I have such a device, and that's a generator. So let's go outside and hook it to the generator. Okay, so I've hooked the frequency meter up to my trusty old generator. And let's start it and see what happens. There, look at that. It's 62 hertz, almost exactly. And that's not really unsurprising because the generator is typically adjusted to run a little bit too fast under no load because it will slow down when there is a larger load applied. Now watch what happens if I adjust the governor on it to slow it down a bit. You can certainly see the frequency drop. You can also see multiple reeds vibrating at once at certain times. So it's almost acting like a spectrum analyzer. And in fact it can. And I'll show you that in the lab. So to show you that this vintage frequency meter can not only do frequency but also spectrum, I've set up this little experiment over here. And what you can see is I have a microphone down there attached to the input of my computer. And the output of the computer, this wire, is in fact connected to the input of an old linear audio amp. And the speaker output of the amp over here gets connected up to this little AC wall transformer. But I'm using it backwards. So I'm feeding in the lower voltage, say up to about 25 volts from the audio amp, into the what is normally the secondary of this wall transformer. And then I'm taking the higher voltage out 10 times higher and feeding that up here into the terminals of the frequency meter. So what that'll do is boost the voltage from our audio amp a bit to give us sufficient power to drive the reeds on the frequency meter with some typical audio, which will be my voice saying hello, hello, hello. So we'll do that right now. I'm going to put on my microphone, or my headset, I should say, like that. And I get that the lighting of me is not that good, but so be it. And the first thing we're going to do is record some audio. So I've set up Audacity to do that. And the levels look good. So. Here is some test audio. I'll warn you, it'll be a bit monotonous. Hello, 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 hello. That was the test audio. Now, I'm going to cheat a bit because I've done this before. And the first thing I'm going to do is stretch out the audio sample by basically cutting its speed in half. And I'm going to do that because the frequencies in my voice are actually a little too high for this very low frequency frequency meter to be able to handle. The other thing I'm going to do is try and, as best as possible, cut out, and I've already set that up, anything really below 25 hertz because that's actually causing the audio amp to bottom out. There we go. So with that all set up, now what we'll do is play the audio. So there, look at that. A lot of energy between 55 and 65 hertz 
of course because everything is scaled in speed by 50 percent the actual energy is at twice those frequencies and up here look at around 75 hertz plus or minus a few again a lot more energy so it's really neat you can use this thing as a spectrum analyzer even though it was never ever intended to be one well that brings us to the end of the video about this wonderful old vintage vibrating reed frequency meter and in fact we could also say mechanical spectrum analyzer now you've probably almost without a doubt seen that on a computer you can very quickly print out the spectrum of something like your voice in fact here's an example right here and you might be wondering how we do it well it is actually in many ways a signal processing equivalent of having multiple tuned sensors looking for each of the different frequencies so i'm going to do a couple of follow-up videos one of which the first one will show you in a very simplified form how a computer looks for those individual frequencies and another follow-up video will show you some examples of packages implementing fast Fourier transforms that you can use to well almost instantly get a one-dimensional Fourier transform of something like voice and even very efficiently get a multi-dimensional one if you're working with image processing. So until then.